What kind of train is that? Well, you're looking at the MBTA Commuter Rail's Cable Train, an integral part of the MBTA's latest project. So, what does this train do, and why is it important? With the modern age of railroading has come more modern equipment, philosophies, and ways of, well, railroading. In this episode of Boston Railroading Explained, we will be focusing on the importance of something we all know and love, positive train control. Positive train control, or PTC, is a computer system used to prevent collisions or overspeeding on the railroad. This new and important technology exists as a precautionary tale to many rail incidents in the past, where one may have thought PTC could have prevented this. PTC's importance was emphasized by the U.S. Department of Transportation in 2008 when they passed the Rail Safety Improvement Act. This act required that all railroads in the country install positive train control as a safety measure to reduce accidents by December 31st of 2020. The MBTA beat this deadline by August of 2020, just in the nick of time. However, installing PTC across all lines was not an easy task, and in the time that they had, the MBTA had to install their PTC on telephone poles adjacent to the right-of-way a much more cost-efficient and quicker method. However, we all know what New England weather is like, and the MBTA does too. Weather up here means wind, and wind means fallen trees, and fallen trees means fallen telephone poles and wires. And thus, you must know that the MBTA's haphazardly installed telephone pole PTC system was doomed to fail. Yet, they knew that, because now in 2023, the MBTA is installing their PTC cables underground, somewhere that will be unbothered by even the most heinous of New England weather. However, installing PTC cables underground is no easy task, and it must be done in a precise and quick manner. So here's where the cable train comes in, and the part of the video where I yap on and on about how the train works. So, let's set the clock back to the early morning of August 31st, 2023. Good morning, guys. Boston by Rails here. It's about 5.27 in the morning. I am up early and getting ready to embark on a journey to see the MBTA's cable train, a really elusive new train operation that I've really tried to see for a while. I'm really excited, we'll see how it goes, and I'll take you guys along in the adventure. The early morning drive up Route 2 was uneventful until my arrival in Littleton. Located just south of the King Street grade crossing is the siding where the cable train's Fitchburg line operations are based. At this siding is where the coils of fiber optic cable are stored and loaded onto the train. When I showed up, a group of about 50 track workers were meeting in a circle discussing the plans for the day. Now I saw this as a sign of good things to come, but I would soon find out that today was loading day for the cable train. No going out onto the main line. The train would be staying put all day and reloading cables onto the flatbeds. Mission failed. So fast forward about four weeks later, and I am out again, this time on a Saturday. Signs of colder weather are beginning to show themselves here in Boston, and because of that, the cable train is trying to get as much work done as possible before the ground freezes. Today's quest brings us to Lincoln Station on the Fitchburg Line. This unique station is one of few on the MBTA where only one side of the tracks has a platform. And look down there. Do you see what I see? That's right. The MBTA cable train is here. And it looks like we've caught them at the perfect time. 
they are currently nearing their end point for the day, the Lincoln Road grade crossing which splits the station in two. Right now, the train is crawling at their maximum cable laying speed of one mile an hour, quite slow. This train itself is a big employer. On days like this, the train has a crew of about 50 people, from the engineer and conductor to the track foreman and the cable layers. It's got quite the squad. The train keeps creeping forward until finally it stops to readjust the cable coils. At this moment, the crew hops out to take a little stretch break. After a few minutes, they begin their trek forwards once again. Our leading locomotive, PNLX 2107, is an MPI MP20 GP-3 a unique locomotive with the shell of a GP38-2. This locomotive has been on the leading end most every day for the cable train. Trailing second is refurbished GP40-2LW number 9619. This ex-Canadian national beast still shows signs of its older railroading days, with three unique classification lights up top. These were once used to signify to passing trains what each train was operating as. If the white light was on, that would mean that this train is an extra train not on the schedule. The green light would mean that this train was regularly scheduled. Red would mean that this is the end of the train, for example, a single locomotive. Now let's take a look at the cable train from a different angle. Let me talk about the cable laying consist real quick. The first car we see is MPCX 201, a trench digging cable car. Today this car is being used for feeding and laying the cables by the right of way, but it can also dig a trench to a depth of about 60 inches for the cables to go in. Following behind that are the flat cars, MPCX 4001 and 4002, which have a combined 24 cable coils on them. When being fed through the trencher, these cable coils spin and release the cable. Finally, at the rear is PNLX 4043 an ex-Central Vermont railway caboose, still sporting its old iconic logo. All of these pieces of equipment were delivered to the MBTA property this past summer. So now, let's take a closer look at the cable laying operation. And for that, we must cross the tracks. I filmed these operations through a public parking lot but double checked with one of the track guys to make sure it was okay. Always do this while rail fanning.
Is it just me, or do the colors on this locomotive look awfully similar to the Southern Pacific Railroad's iconic paint scheme? Let me know what you think down in the comments. The train works at a walking pace, literally. Many workers walk along the train and guide the cables onto the ground. Now, I'm not quite sure why they aren't digging trenches on this day, but I'm sure they'll come back soon. Because track workers are constantly scrambling around the cable train, there must be an extra layer of safety added to the operation. Whenever another train wants to pass through the work limits, they must first ask for permission to enter the territory by way of the track foreman in charge. Speaking of which, train 1405 is about to do just this. Let's listen in. Just a few minutes later, 1405 passes by the cable train. Notice how similar the PNLX 9619 looks to the GP40MC 1122. Well, that's because the 9619 and 1122 are both former Canadian National GP40 2LWs. It's a small world, isn't it? Now that the train has reached its destination for the day, the cable coils don't have much cable left. The amount of pressure these coils hold against their shells is immense. Just watch how they fly into the air. The cables now must have their ends snipped, so they all meet at the same point. Once the cables are all cleaned up and the cable laying crew is all set, it's time for the railroading crew to do their railroading things. First, the cable train backs up just far enough to allow cars to flow back through the Lincoln Road crossing.
This job requires hard work, and I can tell that the crew uses the caboose as their spot to unwind and take breaks. Check out all of those chips. Next, before the train can head back home, they must perform their brake tests. Ready for the brake test. Seven, I'm showing 90 back here. Okay, set the brake. Down at 16. It's set. Okay, to release. Back up to 89. Uh, give me one second just to touch base with West, and I'll get back to you. Okay, Roger. That's the end of mine. You can hear the crew mention numbers like 90. They are referring to the pounds per square inch, or PSI, of the brake's air pressure. The PSI must be within a certain range to ensure the brakes will work. And with those brake tests complete, the crew on the caboose will discuss with the engineer about heading west. All right, 2107, uh, stop. Talk to west. He's aware of the move and the plan. Um, we have to wait for 1406 to go by, and then uh, we'll be on our way. So if you want, you can start heading west to hills on the number two track, clear for 80 cars. Clear for 80. Back it up. I'll say, trying to capture this train was more of a hero's journey than I would have ever expected, but I'm glad it all worked out in the end. The cable train represents a unique fragment of the MBTA's future that will play a part in each and every one of our daily commutes. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I will see you all again soon, out there on the rail. This is a monumentous Boston by Rails occasion.